Uh, this is Zim uh, for the vodcast. I watched uh, Michael Bay's, I guess, magnum opus or most remembered film. Uh, when I researched it online, uh, they said his best film was a film called The Rock. So I decided to watch The Rock. The Rock came out in 1996 starring Nicolas Cage. Um, Sean Connery and Ed Harris. So, the story follows. Well, what kicks off the story is a, a bunch of people from the military, basically, desert, and take hostage. Uh, I believe sixty hostages on Alcatraz, and hold them ransom. Uh, because they feel that the, government has a haven't been treating them properly, you know, used them, sent them out to war, not giving them compensation when soldiers die in duty, um, not giving proper compensation for both them and other soldiers. So they're essentially holding the people hostage and trying to get money out of it. So uh, the main character is there's two main characters. One is is Nicolas Cage who plays a biochemist who works for the FBI, who specializes in uh, biological weapons, which are the weapons that the people, the, I guess, terrorists, um, hijacked at the beginning of the movie to use it as a threat, that they were going to activate a bio-missile, a biological weapon, on San Francisco. So he's hired on... Uh, Right before he's hired on, he learns that his wife is pregnant, and he kind of feels uneasy about it, but he feels even more uneasy when he is assigned to this mission, and it's 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 high stakes, so there's a clicking, ticking clock element to the entire story, um, but they can't get into Alcatraz to infiltrate, so they, hi they go to a prisoner, who's the only one who's escaped from Alcatraz, who's played by Sean Connery, and... Origi and when they they try to make a deal with him, uh, the government tries to make a deal with him that if he helps them get in to Alcatraz, that they would pardon him uh, because he had done other crimes before. Uh, so he basically tries to con them out so they can go meet his daughter, who he has, I think, only met once because he's been in prison basically for the past 30 years, and uh, Nicolas Cage has to chase him down and convinces him to help him. So both of them now team up as the main characters. Uh, Ed Harris plays the terrorists. Um, so they basically have to race against the clock to get into Alcatraz, fight off the terrorists, and disarm all the nu uh, not nuclears, all the bioweapons. And the only one who can do it is Nicolas Cage, who's a biochemist, and Sean Connery, who's a uh, kind of like ex-military uh, terrorist. He's also kind of a terrorist himself. But he's noble. Um, what's interesting about the story, specifically its themes, is that uh, Michael Bay, in all of his films, has a deep reverence and respect for the military, uh, even in his movies now. Um, this movie feels very technically accurate. Um, it shows off the military in its best ways and surprisingly it's in its worst as well. Um, almost all the soldiers in the entire time is uh, treated with respect, especially the uh, even the terrorists who are of course ex-military and are doing it because they feel like their government um, hasn't fully supported them. Or financially at least. Uh, and it's 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 weird because how do I say this? They want the money to get compensation for their families and the families of soldiers who have fallen, and the government wants to save the hostages, disarm the bombs, but then they don't pay them. So and and you're showing both sides. So, it's not, it's both pro, 
American and, like, anti-big government at the same time. Because, because while they clearly demonize through the antagonists what they do, and they show the antagonists regretting having to fight off other U.S. soldiers in, in the scene where they basically clash and all the soldiers who are sent on the mission die except for Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery. The main villain, Ed Harris, heavily regrets that it had to come to this. And he's shown, despite doing immoral things for a good reason, he's shown to be just for... Because near the end, he... They basically realize that the U.S. is not going to give him the ransom. And some of his soldiers say, let's launch the bioweapons to show that we're not messing around. And he utterly refuses. Like, outright. But showing, showing that uh, kind of more moral gray area in the film. And it's weird. I guess this is why it, people consider it his best film, because of the nuance. But it's strange. Um, well, that's just our whole theme. Uh, the characters... Nicolas Cage's character... Uh, when he's first introduced, is he, he's with his girlfriend and she reveals that she's pregnant and that he wants to marry her. But he seems kind of nervous about the fact that he's going to be a father. And this the film kind of sets up that him going on the mission is kind, and him being cowardly. And the whole... the whole His whole arc was trying to like basically not be a coward and learn how to like actually get in and do the dirty work. How to, to be a field agent, essentially. And you'd think it'd be a metaphor for, or at least a parallel with uh, his anxieties with fatherhood, but um, it doesn't. I mean, it it sets it up, but it doesn't really pay it off in any meaningful way. I mean, there's kind of a familial thing between Sean Con with uh, Sean Connery's motivation because he wants to basically just be with his daughter, but um. I mean, the arc and the way it's structured doesn't feed back into the idea of fatherhood, really. Um, it's just kind of Nicolas Cage trying to deal with the situation, trying to learn to like separate the suffering and the killing uh, from the mission kind of thing. Which is, honestly, it's, it's, it's pretty rushed. Um, he seems way too okay with it. And then again, it's, he's fighting terrorists, so... And, I mean, there's a bit with the connection between him and Sean Connery. But, I don't know, it's weird. They, especially since they set it up. But, uh, overall, the film's okay. I mean, I don't know if I'd watch it again. I mean, Nicolas Cage was the best part, he always is. Um, but it doesn't really have as many of his freakouts. He has, like, a couple good lines. But I feel like this is not as Nicolas Cagey as I expected it to be. And it's the most subtle I think Michael Bay has been or has ever been. So I guess that's why people like it. Well, I guess that's all. That's what I think of The Rock. What I think of it. Um, a storytelling standpoint, I guess. Well, thank you. Bye!